me start with a set of prices. So let's suppose in this example, price of good X is $2, let's suppose. Price of good Y is eight. And the income is, I can't see it, 64. Income is 64. All right. Uh, well then, using the Slutsky decomposition in part E or in part F, Hicks decomposition, find the substitution and income effects on good Y. Oh, I'm sorry, part E is asking good X. Uh, okay. Part F is asking good Y, but then uh, when the price of good X reduces to one. Huh. All, all right, well, I'll, I'll come to that. I don't know if it is a type or, or not. Let's see. So part E asks, what is the substitution and income effects on good X when the price of good X reduces to one? So PX uh, final, let's call it. So these are initial, all right? I'm gonna put PXI. The price of good Y is gonna be fixed. So uh, I'm not putting I or F there. PXF is the final price for good X and it's $1. All right, so clearly price of good X is decreasing means uh, you will probably consume more of good X and or uh, more of good Y. All right, so, but, Again, I am trying to find the decomposition for good X, so I don't really care about your consumption change in good Y. So good X, uh, you will probably consume more or less, depending on whether this good is a sort of a superior good or not. But let's first calculate, you know, how much more good X or less good X you're gonna be consuming. Well, according to the Marshallian demands, right? We're looking at the Marshallian demands. And when we look at Slutsky, we always look at the Marshallian demands, all right? Hicks demands are out of picture when we talk about decomposition with respect to Slutsky. All right, so according to Marshallian demands, X initial or X final, I mean, X always equals to uh, square of price of good Y divided by four times squared of price of good X. All right, so therefore the initial good X is PY squared divided by four PX initial square. Be careful, so this must be the initial price. And the final good X is equal to PY squared, remember price of Y doesn't change, divided by four times PX final squared. All right, well, and by the way, none of those depend on income. So 64 is not going to appear anywhere. So PY square is what? 64 divided by four times PXI square, which is four times uh, four, 16. So it's four units. So initially, this guy was consuming four unit of good X. And when the price reduced to one, uh, what happens is PY square is again 64 four times px final square, meaning one to the power two, so it's just one. So four times one is four, so it's 16, all right? So this guy was initially consuming four units of good x and finally consuming 16. So therefore, x final minus x initial is what we call total effect. Total effect, which incorporates income effect plus substitution effect. All right, so what is the size of the total effect? Well, simple, 16 minus four, which is 12 units. All right, well, this 12 units is gonna be coming from because of the income effect or because of, and because of the substitution effect, but what are the size of those uh, effects? Uh, this is substitution effect. So this is what we wanna find next. All right, so, in Slotsky decomposition, this is what we do. So let's remember the theory. So the theory was the following. So the guy has, oops, sorry. The guy has an indifference curve, right? So this is I divided by PX, I divided by PY. So this is PX initial. So what happens, the PX final is less than PX initial. So the budget line is gonna shift something like this. It's not a parallel shift. So it's income divided by PX final. So what happens is, uh, this is the indifference curve, which gives me the Hicksian, uh, 
I'm sorry, the Marshallian demand, which was four. And then this is the, uh, again, indifference curve under the new budget line, uh, which is uh, 16, right? We already calculated those demand curves. So I don't have to uh, calculate the, you know, the Marshallian demand uh, under this new price uh, uh, scheme uh, because I already calculated the Marshallian demands under any price of good X and good Y. So uh, the, the, the difference 12 units is, as I said, the total effect. Well, in order to find the substitution and income effect, the Slutsky does the following. He says, well, let's look at this bundle, all right, under the new price regime. Uh, I always hate these graphs because there are too many, you know, uh, curves going in around. So hopefully it's going to be clearer with different uh, uh, colors. So what does that mean? The price ratio is going to be the same as my new price uh, regime, meaning uh, two to one. This is the price regime. So therefore, my this dotted red line is my uh, hypothetical budget line. Uh, but it has to pass through this point because what I would like to do is the following. Remember, I originally, meaning initially, x initial, y initial, is equal to 4. Well, by the way, I need to find the y as well, uh, the initial y. How can I find that? Well, I mean, simple. Look at the Marshallian demand. So Y initial is equal to M, which is 64, divided by PY, which is 8, minus PY divided by 4PX. So this is uh, six, uh, yep, 16. No, it's not 16. I am sorry. Uh, this is uh, 8. This is 1. So it's 7. All right, so this corresponds to seven good Y, four good X. So my initial good X is four and my initial good Y consumption is seven. So the question is, uh, this is the optimal consumption when the price of good X is two and price of good Y is eight. Well, what would be, I mean, how much money would I spend if I was consuming this bundle at a price px final which is one dollar and py which is still eight dollar so under this new price scheme what would be the cost or the expenditure of this uh, bundle obviously it would be less than 64 dollars right so this is the real income that we find and in fact that's the this this red dotted line so well let's calculate you buy four good x and the new price for good X is $1. And you buy seven good Y and the price of good Y is eight. So seven times eight, uh, 56 plus four, uh, 62. Guys, if I'm making a mistake, please let me know. As I said today, there's something wrong with me. So uh, it would cost $62. Again, not 64 because you know one of the goods is now cheaper. Um, is this true, by the way? I think it should be 16. Exactly. There you go. I'm not really testing you guys. <laughs> For some reason today, um, uh, my brain is off. Okay, so, um, so it's $60 uh, rather than $64. So if you actually, I mean, you should do it at least once. If you draw a line, xpx plus ypy equals 60 but px is equal to 1 and py is equal to 8. If you draw this line, trust me, it's going to be this dotted line. All right, how do I know it? Well, because there's only one line that crosses this point, meaning 4, 7, and the price ratio is 1 to 2. Um, which is, you know, parallel to the black line. And so it's basically, the, you know, this red dotted line. And because this red dotted line crosses this point 47 at a price ratio 2 to 1, well, then the, the income that is required for this budget line has to be 60. All right. So well, why do I really care about this 60? Well, you'll see. 
because Slotsky says, let's take this as the real income, all right, and find the optimal point. So there's going to be another blue line. So let's suppose this blue line at the indifference curve and this red budget line, sort of hypothetical budget line, gives me some optimal point. All right. Well, this optimal point, uh, let's call it X. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I don't know what to call it. X A. So that X A basically means, well, if it is higher than four, it means this guy is consuming more X simply because of the substitution effect. Why is that so? Well, because the real income required to get this bundle and this bundle is the same, right? $60 under the new price scheme, two to one. So I am keeping $60, the purchasing power of this consumer fixed. What I'm doing, however, is, is finding the new optimal point. And the, re the, the difference between this optimal point and this optimal point is the fact that the purchasing power uh, or the real income of this guy is the same. The only difference is the relative price ratio. So here the relative price ratio is 2 to 8. In the red line, the price ratio is uh, 1 to 8. All right. So uh, for that reason, if there is any more or less consumption on good X, that should be because of the substitution effect, because the income effect, quote unquote, is fixed he says, all right? Um, and then the difference between uh, this 0.16 versus XA, that should be because of the income effect. Why is that? Well, because the, the real budget line of this consumer is not actually the red line. Uh, it, it is this black line. So therefore, the difference between XA to 16 should be the uh, income effect, all right? So that's how the Slutsky was explaining the income and the substitution effect. And by the way, this is not God-given fact uh, because the Hicksian, you will see, explains this uh, quite differently and, and therefore the numbers he achieves is going to be different. Okay, so what does that mean? That means, so given this theory, uh, what I need to do is finding this XA point. All right, how do I find it? Well, this is in fact nothing but a Marshallian demand uh, under the income 60, all right, and under the new price scheme, which is PX uh, final one, PY is equal to eight. So what does that mean? That means this XA is equal to, remember the Marshallian demand is always this guy. Uh, by the way, you'll see it, M is not there, okay? Um, so that means, you know, that this uh, real income is not actually going to change anything. XA is equal to PY squared divided by 4PX final squared. And if you do this, this is uh, 8 to the power uh, 2. So it's uh, 64 divided by 4 times 1. So it's 16. All right. Hmm. So what does that mean? That means... Uh, let me use the black color. Um, XA minus XI, right? XA minus, this is X initial, this is X final. So XA minus XI, which is equal to 16 minus 4, which is 12. This is the substitution effect. Meaning the total effect entire total effect is nothing but the substitution effect. Well, what about the uh, income effect, which means X final minus X A? Well, X final is 16, X A is also 16. So the uh, income effect is zero. So this is the income effect. All right, so what does that mean? That means um, if the consumer has this utility function, all right, uh, by the way, this is a highly uh, popular utility function we use in economic theory, uh, the, at least the microeconomic theory, especially in auction theory. Uh, because the reason is uh, coming from this fact, the, the consumption of first good uh, doesn't really depend on income. 
uh, it's independent of the income. So you first would like to consume some income, even though you have uh, very, very small money. Uh, drawing those um, um, angle curves could actually be very helpful. So even though M is uh, very close to zero, what you're going to do, so, so when M is very, very small, like uh, it's not exactly zero, but almost zero. So clearly this minus PY over 4PX, if PY is high enough, this is going to be negative. So does that mean that this Y is going to be negative? Well, remember, there, there can't be any negative consumption. So that actually means when income is less, uh, not less, uh, uh, small relative to the prices, well, then this consumer is actually going to spend his entire money on good X. He's not going to buy any good Y. So Y is going to be zero. Whenever M is high enough so that M over PY exceeds PY over 4PX, well, then consumer is going to stop his consumption. All right. And then the rest of the money is going to spend on good Y. All right. So this is basically uh, the behavior behind this uh, preference relation or utility function. So that means this guy is, uh, well, obviously, if, uh, if uh, income is very, very small, clearly this X is going to be uh, a function of income. All right. Um, so, yeah, well, so, so that means uh, this conclusion is not going to be fully correct. Maybe I should, I should have selected one example where income is very, very small. How small in this question? I don't know. Uh, I, I need to check the numbers. But for this income level, 64, it's enough of income so that the consumer will be able to fulfill his dream and then on dream on good X and then spend his uh, rest of his income on good Y. All right. I mean, again, think of this as like this guy... So X is like, um, he, the, the guy is hungry and so he needs to eat something and then Y is like uh, ice cream, all right? Well, the thing is, this guy doesn't really want ice cream if he is hungry. So he needs to first make his stomach full. And once it is full, well, then he's going to spend the rest of his money on ice cream, all right? Think it that way. So, uh, so this income, 64, was high enough so that he was able to fulfill his uh, I mean, he was full and then he spent his uh, money, his income on Y. Because of this reason, in this particular example, the uh, total effect, I'm sorry, the substitution effect equals the total effect and the income effect is zero. But this is, this, this, this is not a general uh, conclusion for this utility function. Uh, if M is low enough, but again, how low? I don't know. I need to check the numbers. Well, then this conclusion is going to change, meaning the substitution effect is not going to be equal to income effect. All right. Uh, 